What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we're opening up a pack of Ixalan, obviously a relatively new set. Uh, I do want to mention before we get started, if I sound a little bit nasally or a little bit sick, it's just because of allergies. Uh, I am in South Carolina. The pollen is extraordinarily high, so I do apologize in advance. Uh, but we will, of course, look at this from a pack one, pick one perspective. So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our actual first round draft pick would be. Uh, I did draft a little bit with this set, so hopefully we can get something awesome. So our first one here is Legion's Judgment. It's a sorcery for two and a white. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Uh, obviously, removal is always at a premium and limited. Unfortunately, this is a little bit too specific to be that great. Uh, but there are definitely instances where this will be good. So it's not necessarily a bad pick, but not one that I'd be looking to pick first. Uh, if I was already in white and I needed a little bit re more removal, this would be perfectly fine. Uh, but because it's a little bit targeted towards like higher power level stuff, sometimes you're not always going to find a hit for it. So uh, not my favorite. Uh, Skittering Heartstopper is one black for a 1-2. You can pay one black and it gains Death Touch until end of turn. This was actually a card that I was uh, a little like taken aback by only because it's a little bit better than I thought it would be. Uh, being able to give Death Touch, Death Touch is always great uh, in limited no matter what. Uh, it just allows you to do so many things. It keeps your opponent kind of on edge, which is great. Uh, being able to give this Death Touch is fantastic. You do have to leave up a black mana to do that, which I don't like, uh, but it is actually pretty good. As a 1-2 one, for 1, it's already kind of above the, the 1 drop scale, uh, but being able to give a death touch is huge. So I do like it for that reason. Definitely not first pickable, but not a bad card. Uh, Fathom Fleet Firebrand is a 2-2 two, two for 1 and a red. Uh, you can pay 1 a red and it gets plus 1 plus 0 uh, until end of turn. This is a perfectly good 2 drop. Uh, being able to buff it up a little bit is always fantastic. Uh, a 2-2 two, two for 2 is on par anyway, but being able to buff it just gives it that much more of an edge. Uh, Mono Red is actually pretty good in this set. Uh, it's This set was really based around tribal synergies and things like that, but uh, Will and I actually drafted online uh, some Mono Red stuff with this set, and it was fun. It was really, really good. Uh, Fathom Fleet Firebrand works in the pirate deck as well, obviously playing into that tribal synergy, uh, but it is just a pretty good two drop. So far, it's definitely the pick, though obviously I hope it's not the first pick. <laughs> Uh, Skyblade of the Legion is a 1-3 flyer for one and a white. This is just a perfectly okay two drop. Uh, it's not amazing. It is a flyer, so ideally it's going to be able to get in for a little bit of extra damage. Uh, but it's just not amazing, unfortunately. It's not my favorite. Uh, one threes tend to be like good stall cards, but in general not the best uh, long term. So in this case, it's just kind of okay. Uh, Exali's Diviner is a 0-3 for 1 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, it explores, so you reveal the top card of your library. You put it into your hand if it's a land card, otherwise you put a 1-1 counter on the creature, and then put that card back on top of your deck, or you put it into your graveyard, you get to choose. Uh, explore is always really, really powerful. This is a pretty solid 2-drop because uh, it gets to kind of stall the game early and also digs you a little bit further into your deck. There's a lot of explore synergy there. Uh, really, really like this. Um, it's still not the most exciting card. I'd still rather have the Fathom Fleet, uh, the uh, Firebrand here. But again, ideally, this is not going to be our first uh, pick also. Uh, Opt is an instant for one blue, scry one, and then draw a card. Uh, if you don't know what scry is, you look at the top card of your deck, you decide if you want to put it on the top or the bottom, and then obviously the second part of this card, you draw a card, so you either get to draw that card or you get to draw a card that you haven't seen yet. Opt is a perfectly reasonable and efficient draw spell. It's a perfect cantrip for that reason. Uh, cantrips, generally speaking, and just draw spells really in general, are okay and limited, but not amazing. It's not like they're bad by any means, but uh, you really want to be getting a lot more board presence and things like that. Obviously, something like op like opt being only one mana means you can really kind of slide it into a turn where you uh, don't really use your your mana efficiently, or maybe you have like a a three drop that you want to play, but it's turn four. You have a fourth land. Maybe opt is a perfect time to slide that one in. Uh, for that reason, I actually really liked op like Opt uh, in the limited format just because, again, it's instant speed. It's only one mana. You can slide it in whenever you need to. 
uh, but it isn't drawing you a ton of cards. It's just kind of okay. Uh, I'd still rather have something with more board pl board presence, hence taking the Firebrand over something like Opt, but it's not bad. <laughs> uh, hijack is a sorcery for one and two red. Gain control of target artifact or creature until the end of the turn. Untap it, and it gains haste until end of turn. Uh, this is a classic effect. We've seen this a lot, uh, and it's actually a really good effect. You can use this to your advantage in a lot of different ways, sometimes just dealing a lot of damage, sometimes... Uh, sacking the creature that you're stealing uh, or the artifact that you're stealing in this case. Uh, I like that this deals with artifacts or creatures. There are different instances where that can actually be a huge help. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to use this on a creature most of the time. Uh, and it is pretty powerful. I still like the Firebrand better, to be honest. But this is a really good card for certain outlets. I'd rather have those outlets first, though. <laughs> Uh, contract Killing is a sorcery for 3 and 2 black. Destroy target creature, create 2 colorless treasure artifact tokens with tap and sacrifice this artifact. Add 1 mana of any color to your mana, mana pool. Excuse me. This is a perfect uh, just removal spell. It's on par at 5 mana for sorcery speed. It's obviously not amazing, but you do get that little bonus of those treasure tokens left behind. Uh, I really, really like this card. This definitely beats out the Firebrand in my mind. Uh, Removal is always at a premium, but uh, especially in these sets, I tend to take it a little bit higher. So uh, I really like Contract Killing. Uh, Blinding Fog is an instant for two and a green. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to, cr to creatures this turn. Creatures you control also gain Hexproof until the end of the turn. This is really as a save yourself spell or save your creature spell. Uh, I tend not to like stuff like this, especially Unlimited. They tend to be a bit of a trap for newer players because they think, oh, well, I give something Hexproof uh, or I prevent uh, a huge, huge swing of life uh, not in my favor. And a lot of times that's sometimes helpful but not great like a lot of times it just kind of stalls the game a little bit but doesn't actually get you anywhere uh and so cards like this while uh, occasionally can be really really good uh in like turbo fog decks a little bit more constructive where you're just kind of fogging every turn until you do something awesome and limited it's so inconsistent that it's really not worth it so i tend not to like cards like this uh paladin of the bloodstained uh, is a 3-2 for 3 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. Uh, this is a, two, a classic 2 for 1 no matter what. Uh, two for ones on yourself are always great because you're just getting two cards for the price of one uh, Splitting that damage up into two creatures is great uh, There's also a lot of synergy obviously with just vampires in general in this set uh, So I really really like it for that reason. I don't know if I like it more than contract killing uh, Contract killing is obviously just a great card. Uh, so I'm gonna keep them in the same pile for now <clears throat> Uh, Verdant Rebirth is an instant for one and a green until the end of the turn target creature gains when this creature dies return it to its owner's hand and then you also draw a card again this is kind of a save a creature spell it does draw you a card so it has a little bit more use than your average kind of spell like this uh, but in general really not a fan of this uh, kind of surprised this is an uncommon to be honest. A uh, rallying roar is an instant for two and a white creatures you control get plus one plus one until the end of the turn and you also untap them. Uh, I've been surprisingly uh, positive with cards like this actually. Uh, if you watched our Magic Wars video with Tyler from Burst of Knowledge, uh, you'll know that I kind of won that game solely based on a card very similar to this, uh, where essentially I was able to swing in uh, on my turn for a decent amount of damage and then kind of bait him into attacking me. And then playing a card like this, which untapped all my creatures, buffed them up, and then gave me so many just amazing blocks. Uh, it really, really was awesome. These cards can be good in those instances, but they are a bit of a corner case. I don't think you should expect them that often. If you are in like a vampire strategy, like black, white vampires for this set specifically, something like this is great because you get a lot of tokens and being able to buff them up, untap them, do a lot of damage, or just block effectively can be really, really good. In general, I'd rather have the go-wide strategy kind of uh, fleshed out first before taking a card like this, though. Uh, Charter Course is a sorcery for one and a blue. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attacked with a creature this turn. This is just, a, again, another efficient draw spell. It is sorcery speed, so it's a little bit slower uh, than Opt. 
It does also cost two mana, but you do also draw two cards. So there's a lot of upside to this. Again, draw spells, not amazing, but definitely okay in a blue deck uh, if you really, really need them. Again, I'd rather have that blue shell established first though. Uh, and then our rare here is Ashes of the Aberrant. It's an enchantment for one and a white. Players can't cast spells from their graveyards or activate ability cards in graveyards. Uh, whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. This is a very classic, not limited card. This is so bad and limited. Uh, graveyard abilities, very rare to see on a regular basis and limited. Uh, and whenever a creature dies, you gain one life is like the slowest thing ever for limited. So this is really not a limited card at all. There are definitely instances where this is okay uh, in constructed, but again, even there, it's a little bit hit or miss. Uh, it's mostly just sideboard, and even then, I don't think it's the best option. So not exciting about that. I'm not excited, excuse me, about that. So it really becomes uh, a choice between these two cards, the Paladin and Contract Killing. For me, I would take Contract Killing just because it's always going to be solid no matter what I end up in. Uh, Paladin and the Bloodstain, similar in that it's always going to be good, but it's really at its best in that Vampire deck. Uh, it may be right, actually, though, to take the Paladin because there is so much support for that Vampire deck. So I could definitely see taking that over the uh, Contract Killing. Uh, I just happen to really highly uh, pick removal just because I know it's really, really good no matter what. So for me, contract killing is the pick. Uh, Paladin also being a very, very close second in my mind and potentially even better. Uh, so with that, guys, I do apologize if I've sounded a little sick in this episode, but I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.